So Lizzie, you're performing in uh, Tavastia at, in Helsinki today. Yes. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Nice meeting you. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. And nice meeting you too. Uh, are you having fun on tour or do you stress a lot? It's a combination. I have a lot of fun when I'm performing. You know, you go through all the planes and trains and cars and sleepless nights, you know, all for that one hour on stage or 75 minutes. So I love performing and I and I like a lot of the traveling. But there's days where you get tired or lonely or, you know, sick or, you know, but for the most part, I love it. It's fun. That's great to hear. Um, uh, do you... Do you know a specific reason why are you so big in Norway? Well, I or like uh, sorry, um, Nordic countries. Well, specifically, Norway has been great for myself and my band. I'm doing this tour solo, but I've also had a band with me over the last like six years. And I people ask me why they think I'm big in Norway, and I think it's a combination of having like a good team there that helped me, you know, with promoting my shows and marketing my album but also I think just some good opportunities and moments where I was able to connect with my fan base and that's led to them you know coming back every time and um, you know it's hard it's hard for me to say I don't know exactly why but I love being in Scandinavia in general it's great yay okay let's go to the music part new album is coming out next year February yeah yep. Uh, what has changed since the last record, Back to Forever? Well, a lot's changed. After Back to Forever, um, I became an independent artist. Oops. <laughs> This is how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot has changed. After Back to Forever, I toured quite a bit on that album. And then um, I became an independent artist. And then I decided to you know, take a little bit of time. I wasn't wanting to rush back into another kind of major label mm. deal or business model because the record business is changing so much. So ultimately, I just wanted to take a step back and I got, you know, I got back into um, writing and recording like more just for fun and being creative because I didn't really have a schedule or anyone telling me what I needed to be doing. So This album feels like it was created from a more spontaneous place in a way and then sort of pieced together and was like, oh, now I have an album. But it, it wasn't as intentional in a way, but I think it almost is a little bit more genuine because of that. Um, and just like I moved, uh, I left California after 12 years. That's what the album's kind of about, my California time. It's called My Wild West. And so I just this summer left California. I moved back to... Uh, Iowa, the Midwest where I grew up, and um, so a lot has changed. Yeah, like back to the roots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, can you tell us something about the upcoming record? Like, can you re reveal something? Oh, well, one thing that was interesting about My Wild West, which is out in February, uh, an interesting anecdote, I guess, is that some of the songs that I wrote that ended up on the album really kind of predicted this big life change I was going to make by leaving California and moving back to the Midwest. Um, so I saw hints in the songs that like a change was coming, but I didn't know what it was. And that's the interesting thing with your subconscious mind is like I felt like I really worked through this big decision to change my life up um, through writing and recording these songs. Um, it's nice because the, the album starts with a song called Hollywood and it ends with a song called Ojai and those were the two towns I lived in in California so I thought it you know they were nice bookends um, there's no really hot gossip or anything to reveal <laughs> about the songs or you know I could make something up but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. okay you write your own songs yeah uh, describe yourself as a writer with three words Well, I want to say I do, you know, I write my own songs, but I co-write. I co yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I get help with the arrangements and some of the chords um, and sometimes lyrics, too. Mostly the lyrics are mine, but um, uh, three words, I would say uh, heartfelt, personal, and literal. 
because I think I'm a very literal lyricist. I there's no mystery to what I'm saying. It's very obvious. <laughs> so. That's a good answer. Mm. The next question is about co-writing. Uh, do you prefer doing it like with your crew or like solo? Which is the best for you? You know, I enjoy I enjoy all the different kinds of writing in different ways. One thing that's nice about um, some of the songs on this record, like Stay, um, Go For A Walk, um, Hero, you know, you'll know these titles once the album comes out. Those were songs that just came to me. Yeah. And in part, Sun Keeps Rising, that was like a co-write, but it was more like, I just was like, oh, I have an idea, like, bleh, and the whole thing came out. So I find it really therapeutic to write when the songs just come and it's like like comes from somewhere else or it's something that's just been building in you and it you write it all in one sitting like really fast I think I really love writing that way and some of my best songs happen that way but that being said actually some of my best songs really happen when I co-write because I think there's a little more quality control I'm kind of lazy when I write by myself and when I'm with others I get you know sort of an objective opinion that I can't quite see about certain lines or melodies maybe could be better or elaborated. So anyway, I, I like both kinds. Good. Uh, well, um, what is like to be a woman in music industry, like as an artist and as a writer and music maker? Mm. Well, I don't know. I think it's a woman thing and it's also like where I grew up in the Midwest in the United States, but I'm a real like people pleaser and I want people to like me and I say sorry a lot. I'm always like, sorry, sorry, like, sorry. You know, I'm not great at negotiating for myself. I and feel you. Yeah, <laughs> and you tend to not want to be, you know, I, I I feel like it's a it's a woman thing and just kind of my personality that sometimes I think I, by trying to make everyone else happy, I kind of get cut short because maybe like, women's egos aren't as big as men's. I know that's a generalization, but I'll tend to kind of just give people what they want so that everyone's happy, you know? <laughs> and, and I don't always come out the best because of it, but it's important that like everyone is feeling good and taken care of. Um, Do you think you're too kind? No, I don't think I'm too kind because sometimes I think I can I manipulate people on, on accident subconsciously with my woman card you know I'm like you can kind of get away with things because you're a woman and that's terrible to admit but I think sometimes I'm too nice other times I think I'm subconsciously manipulative <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel you I'm about that also honest. yeah well yeah. and I have questions for you too now oh my god yeah. Well, um, I want to hear. What, what, how do you feel? How do you feel about being a woman in the music business? It's hard, but it it has like the positive sides also, and like there are so many women that sing like with a good voice. But you have to ha have the stories and your own style and like find your inner voice and just let it like glow and let's just like see that what happens. It's not like you can do your best, but it's not like only in your hands. Yes. No, I, I could see that. I think too, like if you're a girl singer songwriter, you can be perceived as being kind of whiny or wimpy. Mm -hmm. But there's so many male singer songwriters that I think are out there that do so incredibly well. Like, you know, and, and it seems like there is some disconnect because they're men it's like seen as being vulnerable. But if you're a woman and you're doing it, you seem kind of like a whiny, whiny wimp. Bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's continue. Um, the music industry is changing, no doubt about that. So um, what is the greatest and the worst thing in music industry today? Well, I think it's an exciting time, especially for independent artists, because if you have strong ideas about what you want your music to be and you know the videos you want to do and the photos you want to do I mean I've struggled a little bit because sometimes I think my visual idea for myself isn't really as developed as just I wish the songs could just speak for themselves but I think if you have like a really good overall picture of what you want to put out into the world as an independent artist there's so many ways to do that now and 
you know, you could maybe hire, you can tour and make some money and then use some of that money to hire in like a freelance person to do your press for a certain amount of time, but everything's kind of more under your control and you know how much money you're spending. Whereas with the labels, like it's kind of like, you know, they're taking care of that, but before you know it, like you're in, in debt to them and it's like you don't own your music anymore. <laughs> so um, I think that as, as an independent artist with vision, it's a, an exciting time. Um, I think, you know, some of the bad things are that it's harder to make a living if you want to solely focus on music as your main, you know, what you're doing day in and day out. It's and you, and you rely on it also to, to make a living. You have to get a bit more creative because you can people try to fight it but like people aren't buying as much music and that's just a fact so you have to um get creative but i also think that in the future there's going to be a balance where like where there's like artists are able to profit in a healthy way but also the big stuff that is kind of crap anyway will have to like kind of come down and like it'll come down from here and up from here okay. and even out somewhere in the middle and i think like the future of music is bright that's great to hear. I, I want to believe it the same way. Yeah. Uh, your music is very organic and down to earth. Um, how do you feel about the state of pop music today? And uh, how are you fitting in or standing out? Um, there's a lot of really great pop music, I think, out now. I mean... Um, what's, your, what, what's your favorite at the well, moment? I mean, so some of my, I say like guilty pleasures. Um, I think The Weeknd is awesome. That's no guilty pleasure. I think it's great that he's hit the mainstream and Drake is cool. Um, I Ariana Grande has some songs I really love and Selena Gomez has this song called Good For You that is like totally my jam. Um, and so I don't know why I'd say that'd be a guilty pleasure, but, uh, but I think so much of those people's success, I mean, th those are great songs, but like the, the, the emphasis on like being sexy and how you look and like who you date and like fame and like luxury like those elements I just kind of find to be just hype like it's just made up like it's just like a you know it's false or something but not to criticize anyone so I think I don't really see myself ever being in that position like I've actually kind of admitted and accepted that to myself that like I'm I'm not gonna ever get to that level, but I also don't think I really want to. So <laughs> I know very exciting and yeah. like kind of lame sounding, but it's not lame. Yeah. It's it's good to know what you want. Yeah. Um, the song "Shameless" mm -hmm. um, from your previous album. Tell me, um, is that your statement for music business? Like your soul is not for sale. Yeah, I mean, I think when I wrote "Shameless," I was a lot more like kind of frustrated about like being in the music business and having you know the people around me thinking that I needed to try to be number one and and looking at like how things were going down around me like other peers of mine who I knew who were doing well and seeing how like like you really kind of had to be like a social climber or like like a politician <laughs> or a I mean, there's a lot of great people who, on the merit of their talent, like, skyrocket. So I'm not... I think when I wrote Shameless, I was a little bit more, like, bitter about the whole thing. And kind of... I answered it in the last question. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things that I just don't care to participate in. And it doesn't mean I'm even criticizing it. It's just not my bag. So I think now I'm a little bit older and I have other things going on in my life. Like, I don't think it bothers me. It's bothered me then, but now I think I just accept it for what it is, and I know that, like, you know, I'm just going to do my best, and people like it, great, and if they don't, great, and, you know, what else can you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, uh, do you think the competition is hard, and um, how do you manage to keep your head, like, clear? Well, I mean, there is a, always so much new music coming out. I mean, I think that's one thing, putting out my third album. If you're not a new artist, it's kind of a little harder to get people to pay attention to what you're doing if you're not like if you're not working some angle or have some buzzworthy story that goes along with it um 
But I think the way I kind of, I just try and think, you know, I love being in nature. I just moved about a farm in Iowa. I find being outdoors and like being around family and friends very restorative. Um, and I think like as long as my focus is on, I have this voice and I have something to say and I uh, am not going to be worried about like the outcome, but just every day if I think I'm kind of doing my best and speaking my truth that whatever whatever the future holds like as long as I'm just kind of doing my thing life will be good I'll I'll be happy and it'll be nice I'll never be like starving in a gutter or anything I don't think so I just try to approach it with that sort of just see do your best to see what happens attitude um what would be the best advice to give for a young female artist who is like in the start of her career Well, I think a lot of what, you know, I don't know if I should be giving anyone advice. <laughs> That's what I always say. That I'm asking. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think, I think part of what helped me in the beginning was that I was sort of like naive. I was just like, oh, you move to L.A. and you get a record deal. Like... That's what you do. You know, I didn't realize like, oh, well, there's like millions of people who are trying to do that. I think being a little naive and almost sort of like delusional was was good for me because I never even entertained the idea that I wasn't going to have some sort of a career in music. Like, not that I was going to be Madonna, but I just always knew like I had this belief that, well, it may be years and years and everything keeps falling apart, but like, I'm definitely making it. Like, I'm doing great. <laughs> like, I was like, you know, like 20 people came to my show, like I'm doing awesome, you know? So I think it's just like continuing to believe and and know that like the definition of success isn't, isn't a record deal or a number one album. The definition of success is if what you're doing, you know, not only matters to you, but seems to be a positive thing in other people's lives like then and if you can pay your rent like you know that could be enough success right there so I think it's like understanding how to define success but also um, like just not ever believing that it isn't going to happen like stubbornly and s naively believing that you're gonna do what you want to do wise words oh <laughs> I'm so happy to be talking to you and meeting you Same to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, could you name the most meaningful song for you, like from your own production and then the whole wide world is open for the second song if you haven't tried it? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's hard to choose like one song. I think I always sort of return back to everywhere I go off my first album because it's a pretty simple but like emotional song that I wrote when I was in Hollywood trying to make it and felt really kind of like lost but kind of put it gave it up to God and that like you know I don't know where to go I don't know what to do like I feel really bad and scared but like I know that like something is going to guide me whatever you believe in out there I just felt this sense of like if you kind of just do your best and like take it a day at a time you'll feel better like stuff's gonna happen like 10 years from now you'll look back at this moment and see that like things turned out okay you know and it was a way of comforting myself and writing that song and I've met people who that song means a lot to them too um as far as like another song that just like gets me every time uh, from another artist um I mean it's kind of like an old standby I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting but nothing else matters by Metallica no matter how many times I hear that song my heart just like I feel it <laughs> that guitar the lead guitar in that song just makes me like I think that's what I love about music that like just makes you feel like it gives me the all the feels I just yes so <laughs> good answer mm. um, the last question is that um, what is your dream in life well I have a lot of dreams but ultimately like my happy future would be to you know live in a place where I am surrounded by nature and that I get to be outside a lot to find a partner because romance has always been a really challenging part of my life um, 
And I mean, it's like even practically just like a like a partner in crime. I do so much stuff by myself and I think it's good for me. Like it's made me strong, but it's like I'm ready for someone to like work together with. So finding, you know, a dude and um, I would love to have kids and I'd love to have a garden and uh, lots of animals and, you know, enough success to where I never want for anything but um you know ultimately to find true love and to kick ass as a genuine authentic truth telling badass <laughs> that's a great way to end this interview thank you thank yeah, you so thank much thank you so much it's so nice to meet you and i say it like eleonora 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 <laughs> eleonora awesome. she's great <laughs> beautiful thank you Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.